today we're going to talk about algorithm. Now I'm fully aware that algorithm is typically something that uh, they were called on Erica. Capitalists like to talk about as they use more of a praxis than over anything else. Now I'm not here to shove some capitalist propaganda down your throat. Neither am I going to say that algorithm is simply praxis. It is an ideology as a whole. Though it should be noted that the methods algorithm uses could be used by any form of libertarianism or any form of anarchist ideology in theory. I also want to add that in the end of this video we're going to go over some updates and stuff like that. So stay tuned. So algorithm is a political and economical ideology in which individuals participate in black and grey markets more on that later, to decentralize the power of monopolies like the state and corporations. This form of praxis that this ideology uses can be summarized in some basics that is counter economics and the nonviolent revolution. So indeed algorithm is also part of the anarcho pacifistic movement. The first to propose this idea were Samuel Edward Conking III in 1974, so in comparison to a lot of other anarchist ideas, it is fairly new. Algorithm symbol is an A with the letter 3, which represents the three A's, Agora, Anarchy and Action. The name algorithm comes from Agora, which can be translated into a gathering place or assembly, and it was a park in ancient Greek that focused on sharing both knowledge and goods among the community, or as assessing to their cash records put it. The term Agora comes from the ancient Greek city of Anthem, it was a place of open minds interacting for the benefit of all, sharing philosophy, education, the free trade of goods and services, plus much more all done voluntarily, peer to peer without any state molestation, violence and taxation. Agorism, like any other anarchist theory, takes a great distance from political parties and patriarchy, in, uh, as well as reformism. But uh, differently from other forms of libertarian theories, it also takes a greater stand with the left and shares a lot of the core values that the libertarian socialist also has. They commonly call themselves for the left libertarians of this very reason. Now with the history over, let's actually get into the philosophy of agorism. So agorism can sometimes fall into, as well as mutualism again, as on key without adjectives that it leaves a lot of room for different economical systems to grow and coexist with it. After the revolution, most of the algorithm methods of revolution can also be used by other anarchists and even so far to the anarcho communists can use these methods, which is also why this occurrence with the great acceptance of all the anarchy philosophies can be documented and seen. So let's talk about counter economics. And the, the idea of counter economic is to create a new market that the authorities are not in control over and to grow these markets large enough to the seize the power from these authorities. They lack the capital which they mainly get from taxation to defend their own authority and therefore is forced to be crumbled down into ruins and the power will then be delegated into every individual instead. The non-violent revolution would then take its place in cases where authorities would uh, go into arms before they're out of capital, okay, they're defending their own authority by attacking the agoristic methods through direct violence, the agorist would then have full the right to defend themselves. Non-violent fear does not go against self-defense, meaning that agorists would be allowed to use counter-violence if they were out of options, which at this point in time, things look like that's the bait where it would go. But let's actually dive a little bit deeper into the algorithmic theory and talk about the five markets. T two of these markets are what the algorithms see as their methods, while one of these markets are something they like to avoid but sometimes need to go into, 
and two of these markets are full on in immoral and can just be thrown aside it should not be accepted so let's begin with them we got the white gray black pink and the red market the white market is the legalized market by the authorities by the state uh, such as taxed good legalized employment regulated goods and legal businesses this is something they like to avoid a lot because it's in in the end just helping the authorities keep their power but in certain cases they will be needing to well go and buy taxed goods like food the grey market is uh, banned by the authorities uh, unless uh, state defined manners so uh, unless the state does it examples of this would be uh, um, unemployment of the book, untaxed goods and unregulated goods. This is something that uh, most agorists would certainly be very active in. And the thing is, you've probably been active in it too, because if you've ever gone and uh, mowed the lawn of your neighbour or helped them clean their car and you've got money out of that, a payment of some sort, well, that is the grey market you're doing it off the book they're not you're not getting taxed or anything and they're not documenting it the state doesn't know it so that is illegal but clearly not immoral by any sense it is very fair well the black market now the black market should not be confused with the black market of the dark web and all of this this is not a black market we're talking about here we're going to get further into what that could be but the black market is things that are fully banned by the authorities and state some examples would be certain drugs some sex and some weapons the black market is uh, with other words totally banned and not even the state are allowed to do it according to their own rules but the black market is still moral because it's not wrong to buy sex from a sex worker not to be confused with prostitution and it isn't wrong to own a firearm and it isn't wrong to do some drugs like LSD, weed, you know, stuff like that, weaker drugs, it's not wrong yet it is totally illegal. For when a lot of people say the black market to think of hitmen, rape, child pornography, all of this fucked up shit and that is not a black market, that is as a matter of fact the red market. Indeed, we're getting into the red market. So the red market is banned by authorities and totally fucking immoral. <laughs> and it's good that these are banned. Stuff like this would be rape, murder, abuse. Y you get the picture. It's, it's messed up shit that should never be allowed and it is totally immoral. Then we got the last market, which would be the pink market. The pink market is immoral by all means, but yet legalized by the state. Stuff in the pink market would be war, taxation, state torture, and imprisonment, which are all moral, but still a date as it keeps the authorities in their position of authority keeps the state in power over the people, over the masses. And as I said, the agorists mainly focus on two markets, these being the black and the grey market, two moral markets that should, in all honesty, not be legalized, but they are. The reason why they use this is pretty self-explanatory, it is not giving the state, the authorities, the big corporations, any goods or any more power through taxation or buying the products. Instead you're doing things with smaller businesses and you are tip it's not uncommon to use cryptocurrencies, which we can actually just jump into. Let's talk about the methods. So cryptocurrency is a very common method used amongst agorists. The reason why it's so common is <laughs> really simple. There's no taxation on it. They are anonymous, depending on what you use. Some could be traced, but they are typically very anonymous. And that is most certainly not banked. There's no monopoly owning the currency. This makes it a lot harder for authorities to trace the buyer and seller. 
as well as it's giving them an entrance to the, both the grey and the black market. Anything bought with uh, crypto is grey marketing, and buying things that would otherwise be illegal, such as weed, uh, LSD, firearm, or services from a sex worker, are qualified as black marketing. This in turn gives the authority less control over the actual market and they don't get money for taxation to be able to empower themselves and force their rules and authority upon the people. Another big part is the vermiculture and just in general being self-sustainable. The reason for why this is so common is pretty simple. If you grow your own food, you fix things that break, you can build some furniture and stuff like that yourself, get some wood, all of this is pretty easily done and you don't need to go and be part of the white market when you're trying to get things like food or basic materials etc etc. When you're trying to get these necessities you don't need to buy taxed goods, you don't need to buy taxed food, which is incredibly useful as that will in turn mean that you're taking another step away from helping the authorities keep their position. This is mainly a way of focusing the currency used to be cryptocurrency as they're not, well as I have said many times now, aiding the authorities in buying essentials. Now, we could also talk about how algorithm believes in a form of a free market and the actual of the goals of algorithm, which is why it's not just a theory or just a practice, it's an ideology as a whole, it got an end goal. But to go into this, we can simply summarize it as there would be currencies, there would be a strong defense against any form of monopolies being created. There is also a form of subjective value which is different from mutualism which got the labor theory of value, meaning that goods can be said to have different values depending on what a seller or buyer are willing to pay for it. This is a lot more similar to capitalism than it would be to leftism and the reason why they call themselves left libertarians mainly got to do with their social views instead of their economical views. It is not exactly the same as anarcho-capitalism as anarcho-capitalism do not take any stand against the creating of monopolies but they got way more in common. One could explain it as a mixture of mutualism and anarcho-capitalism anarcho-capitalism. <laughs> so it's around there. With all of this out of the way, I also want to add that um, in the future I'm not going to talk more about any economical theories for some time. I'm going to make a book review about uh, Vladimir Lenin's book, The uh, State and Revolution, as I've bought that and I'm looking forward to reading it. As well as we're going to get into things like anarcho-feminism, anarcho-pacifism, queer anarchism, in, in, insurrectional anarchism, and the liking from now on. We're not going to talk about economical sides of anarchism anymore because I'm not going to go for the right to anarchism. It is the fullest right I'm willing to go as I do not support the right form of economics and it should not be a part of well, my content. With all of that out of the way, um, thank you for watching, um, like, share, subscribe, whatever. This is my <laughs> sister being a pain in the ass. but yeah, do the typical stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.